So here's a hypothetical. Let's say you're a 25 year old adult male living in Compton, California, and you flip burgers for a living. And then one day, after a fight with your parents or your siblings or whoever, you decide that you've had enough of the day to day, and you get uh, you get maybe you get a little high, and and uh, you decide that you're going to be a no show at work, and you go for I don't know a road trip with your friends to Las Vegas for a long weekend. It's all very fun and irresponsible behavior, and and, and uh, as it happens, it's not exactly unheard of in places like. Compton. And let's say that your boss at the burger shop notices that you didn't show up for work and he reports you missing. And following company protocol, he calls the police and he tells them that you've gone AWOL. He says he has no idea why this is happening or what's going on, but you didn't show up. Well, how should law enforcement respond in that situation? Starting next summer in the biggest state in the country, the answer to that question will depend on one thing, your skin color. If you're black, the cops will respond to your boss's call by buzzing every cell phone in the state, telling millions of people to be on the lookout for you. State authorities will plaster your name and description all over billboards on the interstate. They'll even uh, put you on television in the uh, ticker at the bottom of all the college football games. That's if you're black, to be clear. Now, if you happen to be white, on the other hand, well, it's, uh, it's a different story. If you're white, the authorities will do precisely none of that. Instead, they'll probably just hang up the phone and tell the pizza guy that he's uh, wasting their time. Now, if that sounds far-fetched, you should know that uh, actually it's not. It is, in fact, what's coming very soon in the state of California. It's the result of a new law that was just signed by California's governor and future presidential candidate Gavin Newsom. Under this law, if black people under age 25 um, go missing for any reason, then law enforcement has the authority to issue something called, and, and, and I'm not making this name up, it's called an ebony alert. It's kind of like an amber alert, but in several key respects, it's very different. Watch. On that new tonight, Governor Newsom signed a law that can help track down young people of color who have disappeared. Tonight, we're getting answers on how the new ebony alerts will work and who can benefit from them. California now has a new tool to help find missing black youth. Amber Alerts have been around for two decades, and since that time, more than 370 children and at-risk individuals have been located. Time is of the essence when it comes to an actual alert. But some critics say African Americans are often overlooked by the notification system. You see the difference of when um, white girls go missing and um, black girls go missing. The sense of urgency is not there. African Americans, whether they're children or young adults, are often listed as runaways. State Senator Stephen Bradford is the author of a new law that creates ebony alerts for a community disproportionately impacted by missing youth. African-American young individuals make up almost 40 percent of those individuals who come up missing. It's going to put significant change in how we react. Barry Axius with Voice of the Youth says many young women who vanish end up being victims of sex trafficking. Here in Sacramento especially, a lot of our girls get exploited. In addition to Amber Alerts, California also has Blue Alerts for suspects who attack a law enforcement officer, Silver Alerts for missing seniors and people with disabilities, and Feather Alerts for missing indigenous people. So how is an ebony alert different? Expanding the age from 12 to 25, because right now, a amber alert is for 17 years or younger. Okay. All right. So uh, I wanted to hear all that because there's a lot going on here, starting with the fact that California already apparently has something called feather alerts for Indians. And now they're adding ebony alerts to the mix. Because naturally, when you think of black people, you think of the word ebony, just like Feathers come to mind when you're talking about Native Americans. Now, I suppose there are probably more stereotypical and insulting names they could have come up with, but these are still pretty bad. And for the record, I had to double check that news clip to make sure it wasn't satire, make sure this wasn't some like way too on the nose Babylon B skit, but it's real. They really have feather alerts out west for missing Indians. So people in California will be sleeping or watching a football game or drinking some zesty craft beer. Then they'll get a feather alert on their phones and they're expected to, I guess, drop everything they're doing and scramble to find some missing indigenous person once they see a feather alert pop up. That, that's, that's a real thing that happens in California, at least since last year when feather alerts were first implemented. And this didn't strike anyone in California as being completely and totally absurd, apparently. We can speculate as to why that might be. Maybe a lot of Berkeley grads honestly believe that white supremacist cowboys are still out there tormenting the indigenous peoples at every turn. 
Whatever the case, they do indeed have feather alerts in California, and they're not joking about it. This is serious business. Now, given that simple, if incredible fact, you have to wonder why California authorities haven't deployed, uh, or maybe they eventually will deploy, a whole assortment of other stereotypical alerts for every conceivable ethnicity under the sun. I mean, at this point, why not keep going? They have an, an, an alert that's tailor-made for Indians, and why stop there? Possibilities are endless. They could have a general SOS alert for missing Asians, for example. They could implement a sombrero alert for Hispanics, a, a leprechaun alert for missing Irish Americans. Of course, the left doesn't care about two of those three groups, so this probably wouldn't happen. But given that, that they're now embracing every stereotype imaginable in their quest to be anti-racist, it's not hard to picture something like this down the line. And actually, on second thought, by the way, I think Kung Pao Alert has a better ring to it. And if they don't implement that for missing Asian people, then at least this would be a good system to put in place for when the Uber Eats driver doesn't show up with your Chinese food order. Put out the Kung Pao Alert. Find your food. Now, at the same time, if you pay close attention to that news clip we just played, you probably have more pressing concerns. For example, you might wonder why black people need a separate system of emergency alerts at all. I mean, for one thing, Amber Alerts don't do much, no matter what your skin color might be. As a recent USA Today analysis found, quote, Amber Alerts are extremely rare, and even when they're used, it's unclear how much, help, uh, how much they help bring children home safely. Now, on top of that, the data we have suggests that the Amber Alert system is not discriminating against anyone. Like, in fact, it's exactly proportional. So according to that same analysis, quote, from 2017 through the end of 2021, black children made up 37% of missing child reports and nearly 37% of Amber Alerts, indicating the issues, the alerts are issued proportionally. So what exactly is the problem here? It's exactly proportional. What conceivable reason could there be to implement yet another iteration of a useless system that clearly isn't discriminatory in any way? Well, here's an NAACP flack and California State Senator Stephen Bradford, who is uh, going to try to explain that to us. Listen. The NAACP California-Hawaii State Conference brought the idea for an ebony alert to State Senator Stephen Bradford out of Los Angeles County. The alert would be specifically for black youth and young black women between the ages of 12 and 25. Under Amber Alert criteria, they say black youth are disproportionately classified as runaways. Criteria for the Amber Alert is that law enforcement has to believe that there's a suspicion of someone being abducted as for the ebony alert we kind of broaden that language to basically if you're missing under a suspicious or unexplained circumstance senator bradford says for him the data is clear although african americans make up 14 percent of the country's population they make up almost 38 percent of individuals who go missing every year it's unfortunate that here in california and in 2023 that we need separate types of notifications, but we see through the data that these groups are being ignored when it comes to uh, finding them and dedicating the same level of resources to help bring them home. Okay, so first of all, note how they frame this. They say that these ebony alerts are for black youth and young black women, but uh, these new ebony alerts in California, by law, will also sound for 25-year-old black males. So let's just be clear about that. But moving on, what they're saying is that a lot of black people who vanish aren't being counted as missing persons and therefore aren't eligible for Amber Alerts. And they're saying that's racist. So to understand their argument, you need to know that in order for authorities to issue an Amber Alert by law, authorities need some evidence that a child was abducted or disappeared for some reason against their will. And yes, it has to be a child, not an adult. If there's no evidence of that, then the child is not classified as missing. They're classified instead as runaways. And you know, this, you, you would think this especially makes sense for adults. If a 24-year-old person goes missing and there's no evidence at all that there's any foul play, then in almost every case, that's just someone who ran off for whatever their reasons are. It's not actually an emergency that the whole state needs to be alerted to in, in the vast majority of cases, if the circumstances are like that. So what the proponents of Ebony Alerts are saying is that the police are deliberately misclassifying black people as runaways just to cook the missing persons data because, of course, the police are racist. In fact, that's exactly what California legislators uh, say in the text of their legislation on Ebony Alerts. We don't have to guess about this. Here's what California lawmakers put in the bill. Quote, being identified as a runaway can also be a legal loophole for law enforcement because when a child is listed as a runaway, the police are allowed to delay response and investigation time. 
In cases where the child is mislabeled as a runaway, this delay is crucial, uh, crucial time that could be spent locating a child in danger. So they're just coming out and saying that the police are lying about the large number of black runaways. The cops are taking advantage of a loophole in the law so that black youth can be abducted without any investigation. They're saying that there are, that there are many cases, apparently, where the police suspect that a black child has been kidnapped and is in imminent mortal danger, and yet they just classify it as a runaway because they don't care when black kids are kidnapped. That's what they're saying, which is it's a claim that's spelled out in the legislation from the legislature of the state of California. They can't think of any other conceivable explanation for why a lot of black people might be unaccounted for. Their theory is that all these young black people are being abducted and that there's some sort of uh, epidemic of black kids being kidnapped and all the racist cops have decided to conspire to hide that fact. They know that all these missing black people definitely can't have anything to do with, I don't know, the fact that 70% of black children are born to unmarried mothers. They also know that it can't possibly be apparently related to the fact that more than 64% of black children grow up in single parent homes. You know, which which the chances of a child being a runaway when they're when they grow up in a fatherless home, those chances are much much higher, and so it makes a lot of sense that if you have a community where there are uh, more fatherless homes, you're going to have a lot more runaways. All of that makes sense. It's exactly what we see in all the data, but none of that is relevant in their mind. Instead, California's legislature is convinced that the problem is racist cops who have apparently decided in unison not to investigate missing persons uh, cases involving black people. And the California government's solution to that invented problem is to implement the same solution that South Africa implemented long ago, which is race-based policing, where people with preferred skin colors are entitled to a police response, while people of disfavored skin colors are ignored. They're codifying that into law. With everything going on in the world, you know, there's no better time to build a daily habit of prayer and meditation. Building a habit of prayer can help you cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Focusing on what you're thankful for can increase positive emotions and improve overall well-being. Hallow is the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S. It's helped me maintain a daily prayer routine. It can help you do the same. Download the app for free at hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. You can set prayer reminders and track your progress along the way. Not sure where to start? Well, check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year a podcast available on the Hallow app for brief daily readings and reflections. Or pray alongside Mark Wahlberg, Jim Caviezel, and even some world-class athletes with Hallow. You can customize a personal prayer plan that works for you. Listen wherever you are with downloadable offline sessions. Using Hallow to connect with others who share your values and beliefs can provide a sense of belonging, support, and foster a sense of community as well. Hallow just added a section on their app called Prayers for Peace for Israel, and they have several prayers to help uh, people pray for peace in Israel. Hallow.com is what you got to download. Go to uh, hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. You get an exclusive three months free. That's three months absolutely free at hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. Here's the key part of this uh, new Ebony Alert legislation in California. Quote, a law enforcement agency may request that an Ebony Alert be activated if that agency determines that an Ebony Alert would be an effective tool in investigation of missing black youth, including a young woman or girl. That's it. That's all that's necessary. There, there's no requirement that authorities suspect an abduction or some kind of kidnapping. That's the standard for issuing a statewide alert for non-black, uh, uh, non-white people when they go missing under the Amber Alert system. The text of this new legislation in California admits that. Here's what it says. Quote, the Amber Alert system must fulfill strict criteria for the message to be broadcast. If these criteria are not met, an Amber Alert cannot be issued and the child is labeled as a runaway. But the Ebony Alert system does not have to obey any such restrictions. It's enough, according to this new legislation, for authorities to determine that an Ebony Alert would be a, quote, effective tool for finding a young black person who's missing. There's no other standards outlined in the law, just a bunch of suggestions. The bill goes on to state, for example, that if a black youth disappears under unexplained circumstances, then that could be sufficient to trigger the statewide alert. Non-black victims, by contrast, have to show that they've been kidnapped, essentially. So let's take stock of what's happening. here. The state of California is taking a system that doesn't appear to work, which is the Amber Alert system, and they're duplicating it. Only this time, they're baking in a policy of explicit racial segregation. So they're doubling down on something that, that doesn't seem to actually be working. Classic government uh, move there. And, which is also becoming a classic move, they're, they are racializing it. Now, it's not clear how this will work, by the way. Let's say a 17-year-old black teenager goes missing. Does that teenager get an Amber Alert in addition to an Ebony Alert? 
And for that matter, what happens if an elderly Native American disappears? Do, we, do they get a, a feather alert along with a silver alert? Is there some way to combine all these categories and have an ebony silver feather alert? All it would take is an is a elderly black person who identifies as a Native American, and you know we can do it. We can achieve the singularity. The possibilities are truly endless. Or maybe in that scenario, the 17-year-old black teenager wouldn't get an amber, uh, an, an amber alert because they're getting the ebony alert. Maybe that's the way to work. You know, if a black person goes missing, they get the ebony alert. And if a white person goes missing, they get the amber alert. Well, in that case, California will have established a truly segregated emergency alert system with a separate alert for whites and blacks. At that point, they might as well go all the way and change amber alert to ivory alert. Of course, either scenario is insane and counterproductive, to say the least. It defies logic, really. I mean, think about it. If you're really worried about racist cops and MAGA Republicans who supposedly aren't trying to find missing black people, why would your solution be to categorize all future missing person alerts by race? By your own logic, now the racist cops and MAGA Republicans can simply ignore the alerts for whatever race they don't like. So you're making it easier in that case. Again, we can mock this all day, but all these contradictions and inconsistencies aren't simply the inevitable result of top-down, state-driven social engineering. They're also the inevitable result of the worldview of California politicians and liberals more generally who refuse to recognize reality even when it hits them in the face. You know, the truth is that a lot of young black people do run away from their homes. They do it voluntarily. And the reason they do it is that when they were young, their fathers ran away from them. It's a tragedy that repeats itself generation after generation. It's one of the reasons every urban center in this country is getting more dangerous every year. But predictably, instead of doing something about that problem, instead of addressing the crisis of single-parent homes in the state of California and across the country, Democrats have once again decided to blame their political opponents. They're saying the cops are responsible. They're claiming MAGA Republicans are behind it, etc. That's the explanation they've settled on. As a result, a lot of Californians are about to wake up at 3 a.m. to random blaring alerts on their cell phones, along with all the earthquake notifications and the push alerts about newly deposited poop on the sidewalk. Of course, many Californians will decide to opt out of these alerts indefinitely because they're too constant and too annoying. And a lot of police resources will be wasted pursuing runaways who left home voluntarily. And in the end, black people will continue to to disappear, probably at the exact same rate. Unless something extraordinary occurs, this cycle will continue, unburdened, as Kamala Harris might say, by what has been. For California liberals like Gavin Newsom, that's good enough. You know, for everyone else, and especially for every non-ebony person who goes missing in the state of California, this sends a very clear message. It is an explicit betrayal of the race-neutral system of laws that this country has upheld for generations. So this new law in California, I mean, obviously needs to be struck down as quickly as possible. It should be condemned by every Republican politician and conservative power center in the country. You know, a law that's, that explicitly says, you, if you are a runaway, you only get an alert if you are black and not if you're white. I mean, that kind of law should be condemned by everyone. And if that doesn't happen, if your race can somehow dictate how you're treated by the police, then nothing else really matters. I mean, all the debates about Ukraine and the debt ceiling and Speaker of the House, they all pale in comparison. When they come for you, whatever that charge might be, you'll be judged on the basis of characteristics you can't control. If you're not indigenous or a person of color, then no cell phone alert will sound when you disappear. There will be no signs on the highway telling motorists to be on the lookout for someone matching your description. You'll be isolated and demonized and condemned. You'll be classified as a runaway and forgotten immediately, which is a depressing realization in some respects, kind of demoralizing, but in reality, it's clarifying. It tells you something important. It communicates loud and clear the intent of the people who hate you more than anything else in the world. It tells you that Everything they pretend is an injustice is, in reality, a punishment that they desperately want to inflict on you. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.